Real quick, before these fly out the door this morning, I've got a, a few pieces that I want to show you, and this is going to be a twofer. This, however, as a wake, this is one of those DT fat body wakes, which I also love doing. This is in a marbled craw, going out to Gary this morning. Cool pattern, definitely a fish catcher. And these fat body rapalas are fantastic. Love fishing these. They're just below the surface, but they stay put right where they're supposed to. Now this is the number one size. It'll go down to about two feet, and then it'll pop back up and swim just spotless. It's great. The other one that's getting ready to go out the door real quick, actually all these are, but these two immediately, because um, they're local. This is the ice craw on a lipless. You guys have seen them on the dinger pressing of the S's. This is the same deal, on, and I love doing them on foiled. Foiled is probably the best way to represent this ice crappie. So there you go. Next. So now, let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. Just a few more pieces and then we'll get right into the spray session portion of this video. But this... I almost want to call this a ketchup and mustard craw. Um, certainly not the first to ever do these colors together, but it's definitely my stencil. So the, the unique stencil to me because I hand cut it. It's a very cool pattern. It's definitely a fish catcher and it's fantastic in the spring. Look at that KBS shine. And I'll tell you what, just the most, I think the most impressive part about this new KBS, if I could just say just for a second, is that I got pretty much down to the bottom of the jar that I was using, and it has not skinned over. Um, I've been through, I go through it pretty quick, but I specifically, one of the, one of the asks of them was to just leave it alone. Once you get, you know, pretty much through it, I let it alone. I started using my old KBS, which is perfectly fine, but um, just to see how it, how it responded. And when we get to the spray session part of the video, I'll go over to the spray bench and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about because there's no skinning, there's no thickening. Uh, I've had this since December 17th and I'm shooting this video, at least partially shooting this video, on uh, Friday, February 7th. So I've had it for almost two months. Um, just kind of set it to the side with it mostly gone. Um, generally, if I have set something to the side that full of air, even, even though it stayed shut, if I hadn't done something else with it or added more to it, by this point it would have skinned over, and it didn't. So pretty stoked about that as well. So KBS, hats off to you. You seem to have come up with a much better viable solution. Even though the, the old one that you guys have is great, um, this one, your new product that's not out yet, seems to be even better. No, I don't have a release date and have no idea. Um, but as soon as I know, I'll let you guys know. And I'm sure they'll let me know. PBJs, folks, PBJs. I did two with a dark undercoat, black, that I then meshed. And this has got three colors in it. It's got a Wicked Detail Flesh Tone. It's got, actually it's got more than that. Um, a Wicked Detail Burnt Sienna. A Wicked Detail Moss Green. And a Createx Pearlized Plum mixed on the sides with a pearl, uh, not a pearl, but a fluorescent violet. So it's got a bunch of different colors blended on this, but it is a really, really good PBJ color. like it very much. And I'll show you the white ones that I did. I did a white undertone. And you can see the veining. I've just kind of put a little bit of uh, burnt sienna over top of that, which darkens that from a white. You can almost see the white coming through on the sides here. But it goes from... Uh, from that white veining on the mesh to that burnt sienna to the moss green to more of the fluorescent color and then into that pearlized plum on the belly. And the crawl segments on the belly 
are more subdued intentionally but outstanding pattern this is on a Spro legit Spro rock crawler RK55s the Mike McClellan's and they will go right back into the box and out the door this morning this morning being Friday February 7th over here we've got I showed you these Spro's these now these are just a couple of different versions of shad. It's almost like a green apple shad with the layering. And somebody was saying that um, they work and work and work and don't get the greens that I get. It's only because I'm blending a few different greens together. Now this is more of a fluorescent yellow on the belly that's mixed in with the green and that red. But this is um, it's just a lime, a pearl lime from Createx, and then uh, a blend of olive and tropical green, just to darken it up a bit. And you can see the texturing in that as well, though it's a little bit more subdued on that. And then the traditional, or non-traditional, this is my take on the Tennessee Shad, Tennessee Shad, which is genuinely uh, a green. And that's what we got to show you from the finishing bench side. Well, let's paint something cool. <laughs> 